Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to create an audio player like the one displaying on the screen. Now, this is a custom audio player made only using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. There are no additional frameworks. You can be able to play, pause, mute, change volume, and you will see that in a minute, okay? So you can be able to play like this. You can pause. Then you can change, you can mute it. Okay, check this out. You see, mute. Then you can be able to change the volume. Then you can be able to change to seek it like this. When I click here, it will forward. So that's what I want to teach you. But at the end of the series, I'm going to teach you how to add a playlist, okay? Now, this is the outline of what we are going to learn, okay? This is the first lesson that we are attending to. And they will go all the way to the last lesson. The last lesson will be about creating the controls, those play, pause, images, okay? So, using fireworks. So this will be the outline. So this is the first lesson. We're going to add the HTML and CSS. So we're going to begin with basic HTML like this. I've saved this document as audio player.html and in the same folder I have another folder called images. This holds the control images. You can see them. The mute, the pause, the play and the unmute. Also this the audio folder holds the songs that I'll be using. Okay. So that's what you may be needing. Don't worry about these images. I will show you how to create them using fireworks in the last lesson. Okay. So we are going to begin by adding a div with the ID of audio player. Now this is the div that is going to hold the entire audio player. This div. You cannot see it right now, but it's it's holding everything. Okay. Then I'm going to add another div called the audio box, and this is the div that will hold these audio elements, okay? Everything now. What you can see is what is the audio box. So we are going to style these two divs first. So we go to the head section and add the style tag, and we're going to style them. So this audio holder. I'm going to give it the following CSS properties. It's going to have a width of 610 pixels and margin zero auto. That will center it in the page. Okay. So let's style this one. The audio box, the now visible div, we're going to give it the following CSS properties. It's going to have a background color of pink color, padding of 8 pixels, height of 16 pixels, border radius of 20 pixels, 0 pixels, and the font color will be white. So when we preview this so far, this is what we get. This is what we get, okay? Now, we're going to add this and these divs. So right, so right above the audio box, we're going to have a div with the ID of top wing and below it we're going to have a div with the ID of lower wing then we're going to style this top wing and lower wing as follows we're going to add these CSS properties I'm only giving them width 
background color, centering term, border radius, and height. So when we preview that in the browser, we get that, okay? Then, now we're going to to add the div that holds this button, okay? So by that, we're going to come to the audio box div. That's why we're going to add a div with the ID of audio controls, like that. And that div will hold that button, okay? So we're going to add a button. We're going to make this button have an ID. An ID of play and pause. This is the button that will have that play icon and the pause icon, okay? After adding this button, we're going to style it. We're also going to style all the buttons, okay? So we're going to add this CSS properties. This will, will affect all the buttons. They will have a height of 16 pixels. A width of 16 pixels, border none, outline none, cursor should be the pointer, background color transparent, and no padding. For this specific button, we are going to add this CSS. The background image should be the URL. Remember, we had a folder called images and the post image okay so when we go back to the browser save the document and refresh this is what we get you see the default image is pause and it's a pointer the cursor is a pointer we can also make it a play image you see it can be either. The next thing we are going to add this progress bar. Okay, so right under that div of audio controls, we're going to add another div with the ID of progress bar. Now, this div, as you can see, has another div that is embedded in it, the one that shows the, the progress. Okay, so for that, we're going to embed a div with the ID of progress right now you cannot see them because you have not styled them so let's add some style so I will start by styling this div okay so I'm going to add this style properties the width will be 300 pixels the height the background color the border radius and we'll make it float left and the padding will be two pixels. So let us save it and refresh. You see, it's floating left, but we still need to float this one left. So how we are going to do that? We are going to add this CSS. You see, we are we'll targeting the div, the idea of audio, the divs inside the audio box, and all the divs within. We want them to be display as inline blocks and float left okay also since we're floating these elements to the left we are going to have to add another div here with a style of clear both this will clear the floating okay and that will give the progress bar correct alignment then we're going to style this div that lies in between the progress bar so for that we're going to add the following CSS properties now you can see we are targeting the div with the ID progress bar the child div that has the ID of progress we're giving it the width of 0 pixels the height of 12 pixels the pinkish color and the border radius and this is only to make it look animating. Now this value is what we're going to change using JavaScript when the audio is playing. 
for example if you put here one 10 and you go back we refresh you see there's 10 pixels we put 100 you see but now we're going to do that using javascript okay don't worry about that that will come in a later lesson for now we leave it at zero pixels or we can even leave it at 100 for the purposes of seeing it there then we're going to add the div that holds the time this div but for that go back to our audio box this div we add another div there called with the id of time box the default values will be these but when we're using javascript we will update them automatically so when we go back to the browser and refresh you should get that okay the next thing we're going to add this button that mutes then mutes this button okay so we go back to the code right below there we're going to add a div with the id of mute box and that will hold the button of mute and then mute so we're going to need to style this button right away so we're going to add that line the button with the idea of mute and mute we want the background image to be the url images mute.png so when we save this document go back to the browser and refresh we get that okay then finally we're going to add this volume control and it works the same way as this one okay so we're just going to add a div and another div okay so we go back to the code we're going to add that code a div with the id of volume bar and inside it we're going to have it have another div with the id of volume p those ids can be anything okay and i've noticed the code is getting a little messy but i hope you followed it okay so we style this one and we wait for the next lesson so to style this one we're going to add the following css properties the div with the id of volume bar we're going to give it a width of 100 pixels height of 12 pixels and a padding of 2 pixels div with the id of volume p that is a child of the div with the id of volume bar we're going to give it these properties height width and background color so when we refresh that's what we get so as you can see we have now used html and css to style this audio player and give it a look that we want that's the advantage the advantage is it will give you the look that you want the downside of using the other html5 audio element is that it will look different different browsers and you don't have so much control over it so that's why we are learning this also there's a lot of javascript that we're going to learn this point forward and it's cool so see you in the next lesson where we will continue the javascript and we will add the functionality of the play pause button